Dr. Swarchla, Scientific Director with Ziva Fertility Centers. Let's try to understand today how FSH and AMH levels affect fertility. What we need to understand before all this is what premature ovarian aging or premature ovarian insufficiency, diminished ovarian reserve are. All of the above terms for premature ovarian aging mean essentially the same thing that the ovaries have fewer eggs than they should given the woman's age. Diminished ovarian aging does not however mean that the woman is uh, somehow aging prematurely. It is not so. It is just meaning that the egg count overall is lower than it should be given her age. So what are the symptoms of premature ovarian aging? The two most common symptoms of premature ovarian aging are irregular or skipped menstrual cycles. And how can your fertility specialist diagnose it? Well, the best diagnosis comes from FSH and AMH levels and then an ultrasound as well. And these three markers can give us indication of whether egg reserve is low or not in the ovaries. So it's very important that a doctor, a physician correlate all three FSH, AMH and ultrasound to see what your egg reserve is. What is FSH that I'm talking about? FSH is follicle stimulating hormone and it is a hormone produced by the pituitary which is an organ in the brain that encourages the follicles and eggs to grow and mature each month. If the FSH levels start to go up, typically above the number that means if the FSH levels start to go up, it means that the brain is trying hard to stimulate the ovaries to produce eggs but having a hard time getting the ovaries to listen. When FSH levels increase, they are essentially getting louder in order to tell the ovaries to listen. Since there aren't many eggs left, ovaries are having a harder time to produce eggs. So this is the pituitary screaming loudly and the ovaries finding it very hard to listen to the signals. So FSH is like a signal and the more the FSH, the ovaries have lesser uh, capacity to listen to the signal. What is AMH? Is a anti-mullerian hormone that is made by the cells around the eggs and these cells are producing these hormones at a very low stage. The more the eggs a woman has, the more the cells around the eggs, therefore higher her AMH. So AMH is a very good marker that tells us about the fertility potential of a woman. I'm saying fertility potential, but not pregnancy potential. AMH gives us an account of whether there is good reserve according to her age. So how do you test for FSH and AMH? Both are very simple blood tests and we can identify both these levels. So what are the fertility options after the FSH is diagnosed as very high and the AMH is diagnosed as very low? Well, if a woman has diminished ovarian reserve, meaning that the overall egg count has come down, uh, she may still have an opportunity to have children of her own with her own eggs. But it depends on the uh, level of eggs of what is the quality and the quantity. If there are some eggs that we can access, we would like to do an IVF and retrieve them. And uh, she could also potentially bank them for future use. So AMH and FSH give us a very good indication of a fertility potential of a woman, but not the pregnancy potential. They do not indicate whether the egg quality is good or bad and whether you can get pregnant or not. So therefore, even if you have low AMH, high FSH um, or a very high AMH, uh, you should try for pregnancy. It does not mean that you cannot try with your own eggs. If you want to understand more about these tests and your fertility potential, please feel free to contact us. Thank you. A lot of effort has gone into making this video. Please like and subscribe us. Thank you.